Hi JS lovers, welcome to the channel. Today we have debounce as our next lead code question. So this is again a really important JavaScript interview question because people ask this a lot in interviews and uh, this helps you understand some core concept which you use daily in your day to day coding life, right? You must have seen the use of debounce a lot in real life where you are typing, for example, you are typing something in your uh, Google search bar or Amazon search bar and it's returning a uh, debounce function some sort of way, right? I'll help you with the same example here with proper understanding of concepts and everything. So let's just read out the question and try to see what it is asking us to implement. So we are given a function fn and a time in millisecond t we have to return a debounce version of that function so just before going ahead i will let you know that we will be getting a function whatever we are trying to pass here and then we have to do something in this particular uh, in the particular debounce function so this is a higher order function as you might be as you might already be aware of that higher order function fun accepts another functions as uh, arguments and then do some magic with them and they can also return a function or yeah as as mentioned do something with it right so a debounce function is a function whose execution is delayed by t milliseconds and whose execution is cancelled if it is called again within that window of time so that means if you are making a function call and if you made second function call within that t period the first one will be cancelled only the second will be respected i hope it is clear if not we will take a proper example don't worry right the debounce function should also receive the passed parameter that is whatever parameters you had in your function primary function you should be calling this debounce with that particular argument and it should be passed to the function the whole logic has to be written as precisely as it was earlier right so now let's take an example this don't uh, bother about this image i have made an example to make it clear here okay so for example let's say the time which we want to pause for that this t millisecond is 50 here the function call was made at 30 sec 30 millisecond 60 millisecond and 100 millisecond now the first two function call would be cancelled and the third function call would be made executed at 150 millisecond i will just give you the example here uh, if instead t okay let's ignore that part so initially we made a call at 30 30 second right now you will see that the according to the question we should be making we should be waiting for 50 millisecond and then only making the call right so here we, we will wait for 50 more seconds so the total time at which the function call will be made should be 80 if we consider time as a linear linear um, flowing something right so the fun first function call should be made at 80 millisecond right now we made another call at 60 millisecond right you will notice that 60 millisecond come before 80 right so the first function call would be cancelled the first function call is cancelled now now we have 60 millisecond we will wait for another 50 millisecond to uh, make this function call right so our new function uh, time will be 110 milliseconds i just wrote seconds in front of everyone please ignore it's millisecond so the next function call will be made at 100 millisecond but before 100 milli 110 millisecond we made another call at 100 millisecond right so now this one also get cancelled we only have one call which is at 110 millisecond since there is no more cancellation so and we have to wait for 50 more millisecond the final call will be made at 150 millisecond right and this will print something whatever we wanted to do with it so same here the first one will call, was cancelled second was also cancelled and the third one uh, third one was logged at 150 millisecond i believe yes i hope this is clear yes i hope this is clear let's see a real world example with um, with the debounce uses so you must have used amazon or google search bars right uh, there we just type something and wait for apis to give us response right now you might consider if you are just typing some sort of clothes you want some uh, you go there on amazon to search clothes right you made a request or something like this you typed your clothes here so the api count if we made on each keystroke it will be seven api calls and you can consider these websites are used by millions of users so so the load on backend will increase exponentially right so to avoid this what we usually do for every keystroke we will wait for some certain period of time if there is no keystroke after that we will just make a call so this was without debounce and i will make the next call with the help of debounce so same here if i do something like this close it will make a api just one api call because we made some logic that if the user is stopping after uh, after typing for 500 millisecond we will make a call so if i do reset or if i now now even if i do close man it will just make two calls because we took a small pause here for 500 millisecond if i try to type it with fast it will just make one call right because we just type super fast we didn't wait for 500 millisecond in even in the space sorry for the typos yeah 
I hope this is clear now. Now let's try to understand few concepts before we go to the solution. I let me comment it out. I will help you understand what is set timeout in JavaScript and then we can go ahead, right? So set timeout is a browser API. I have explained it like million times before in my videos not really million times but yeah i have explained it few times yeah you can just go watch and i'll or i'll just explain it in a minute right so set timeout is a, a browser api it's not something which javascript give you it's a browser api that will make sure to call this callback after this particular time right this is in milliseconds so thousand millisecond means one second so this will make this call after uh, this will make this callback uh, call after one mil one second let me just comment it out so that uh, you can see what it is doing so this is saying that after one second just call this right so uh, this just get console logged when you when the one second was passed right i hope it is clear now this set timeout right it gives you a unique identity it returns you a unique identity which you can use to cancel the timer right on line number eight if we just cancel the timer before this one second it will just not console lock it will not uh, call it will it will not execute this callback as you can see since we have cancelled the callback you you are not seeing anything in the console i hope this is clear so if it's clear we will just go to the question now so this is the same function signature which we are doing here in the uh, in the lead code but for for console logging and all i just prefer to use code sandbox uh, we will in the last just copy paste here and i will show you the execution as well so uh, that is fine i believe right okay considering the question now so we have to uh, as i have mentioned we have to design some logic if we are making the next call before the time passed we have to cancel the call right now what we will see what we will do we will use the set timeout here so let me just write set timeout which accepts a callback here and it accepts a time right so what time it will be it will be this particular time what we want to wait for so in this example we want for 100 milliseconds so we will simply pass this time here that is this set timeout this particular function whatever we are trying to execute this should be called after uh, after t milliseconds please ignore undefined i will explain this later but for now just understand that this was called for three times initially since there is no logic this was called three times now we have to design some logic that it should be cancelled these two should be cancelled in favor of the third one right or sorry in favor of the next one the first one should be cancelled in favor of the second second one should be cancelled in favor of third one so let's try to see how we can do that okay so we will try to Okay, so I, as I've explained, this set timeout returns a timer, right? So we will store this timer somewhere here, right? Now this timer is not uh, defined here, so let's try to define it here. I am defining it outside just to maintain the variable. So this this is using a concept in JavaScript called closure. I've explained closure in my previous videos. You can just go and check them. Now this timer, right? It has it has this particular uh, timer's identity, right? Uh, if you see in consoles, it's still logging three times. So what we want, if this timer is get, if this function is getting called before this time, we just want to cancel the timer's value. So what we will simply do is we will clear the timeout. Right now you will see that this debounce was called only once, once after this uh, this last was done. Right now, just note we were asked to return uh, the debounce function should be called. Uh, sorry, the debounce function should also receive the past parameters here, right? So the parameters we are passing here, it should accept those parameters. So in JavaScript, you can get all the parameters passed to the function with the help of this three dots and args. So let me try to explain you by console logging here. So this is how you get it. Uh, if I remove the three dots, which is spread operator, you will see that it's actually in, uh, it comes in array. But if we do the spread operator, this is how it will looks right. And we can now pass these arguments back to the main function. So whatever the function we are having here, we will just pass it and it will start console logging them as well. I hope this is clear now, right? If I have to repeat it again, uh, whatever the logic we have built here, so it's something like if the timer values are getting called again, initially, we do not have a timer value, right? So we will just cancel anything. Uh, clear timeout was ca called with undefined, right? And it doesn't matter if it's calling, if, if it's getting called with undefined. Second time it came, it is see that there was already a set timeout going on. We canceled that set timeout and we executed a new one, right? 
third time it came again and noticed that there is already a set timeout going set timer timeout going on with this timer we cancelled it again and we started the third timer right there was no further function call and there was no uh, and the timer was not clear so after t second it made this function call i hope it is clear right since this was the third time this was not cancelled it executed the call after t millisecond and this is what we have to write if we just copy paste this thing into our lead code and try to run the code we will see that it was accepted now we can just go and submit so before we end i would like to invite to you my youtube channel i have been discussing all of these concepts in a very detailed manner and i will be discussing a lot of new concepts around javascript lead code problems data structure and system design so if you are interested in any of those just hit the subscribe button and definitely see you later thank you